One Zambia, One Nation, good evening. Welcome to the news on TV One. My name is Chilufia Mwelwa and on Sun Language tonight is Isabel Banda. Our top stories in the news this hour, former Vice President Lupando Mwape has been put to rest. The Ministry of Finance gives... The Ministry of Finance gives the Ministry of Agriculture Treasury authority to recruit 600 agriculture extension officers. Lightning kills two children while a third child is battling for her life in Kalulushi General Hospital. And coming up in sports news, the Appeals Committee of World Football Governing Body, FIFA, has lifted the two-year ban imposed on Zambia's football icon, Kalusha Walia. Now, details in our news this hour, President Edgar Lungu has described late former Vice President Lupando Mwape as a man of integrity who served the nation with passion, dedication and diligence. President Lungu says Mr. Mwape's leadership contributed to the transformation of the transport sector in Zambia during his tenure as transport minister. The head of state said this when he addressed mourners during a church service held in honor of Mr. Mwape at the Cathedral of the Child Jesus in Lusaka. Today, Mr. Mwape, who died in Pretoria, South Africa on 21st January 2019, has been put to rest at Lusaka's Memorial Park this afternoon. Sharon Kunda reports. He has been described as a devoted public servant and politician who served the country diligently. People from all walks of life turned up to pay their last respects to former Vice President Lupando Mwape. President Edgar Lungu was among the mourners and he has described him as a man of integrity. He was driven by the desire to save the nation and not personal gain. He had respect for everyone regardless of their social standing in society. Even after leaving public office, he continued supporting the government of the day. He believed in putting the interests of the people first before self. The life and contributions of our Honorable Lupando Mwape should be a call and inspiration to all of us. That is a call to civility, maturity, love and respect for one another in all spheres of life. Archbishop of Lusaka, Alec Banda, led the mass that was held in honor of the late Mr. Mwape. We mourn him as a family. We grieve as friends. We bemoan him as a nation that he is no more. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the death of Mr. Lupando Mwape leaves a void in his own family. Anthony Musonda is a brother to the late former vice president. He says we should see the way that we secure the life of the children of our And at the burial site at Leopard's Hill Memorial Park in Lusaka, the widow Priska Mwape paid her last tributes. I miss you, Rashike. But I know you are in a better place. Thank you for showing me what true love is and making me know how love feels and how it feels to be truly loved. And a family representative, Newton Nguni, thanked government and well wishers for the support rendered to the family. Thank you for what you've done. May the good Lord in his own infinite wisdom grant you various mercies in achieving your goals and much more importantly to lend us such a support to other families that may face the challenges that our family has faced over the loss of Mr. Mwapiru Pan. The statesman was accorded in gun salute by the Zambia Army.
Sharon Konda, ZNBC News, in Lusaka. Government is transforming the country for the better. The head of state made the remarks at State House when Egyptian Minister of Agriculture and Land Reclamation, as Eldin Abu State, called on him. Bright Mokwasa gives us details in this report. He promised me that we will collaborate extensively. President Ed Galungu has met Egyptian Minister of Agriculture, as Eldin Abu State, at State House. The meeting is in connection with the planned Egyptian investments in the agriculture and other sectors of the economy. President Lungu told the delegation that investments in Africa should come from within the continent. When I visited Egypt, we discussed with my brother, and one of the things we promised ourselves, which is what we are translating into practice, is to cooperate more and more as African countries. And we said, look, why should Africa look to Europe, Asia, and Latin America, and the rest of the world before looking to itself internally? And he, he promised me that we will collaborate extensively in ensuring that we uh, help each other. For Zambia, we identified agriculture as number one, and I'm glad that uh, here you are. Uh, the agreement you've signed with uh, your brothers here reflects that uh, it's a practical interpretation. And the Egyptian Minister of Agriculture said Egypt is proud to continually collaborate with Zambia. Uh, we were uh, happy to come to Zambia with the delegation to uh, work with our colleagues and brothers from the Zambian side on uh, strengthening and deepening the relations between our uh, two countries, especially in the area of agriculture. After the meeting, presidential spokesperson Emos Chanda spoke to journalists. Economic diplomacy shall determine more uh, uh, Zambia's interests uh, abroad. So the president's trips, the president's foreign engagements are informed by things like this. That visit, among other things, is bearing fruit to what you have seen. While in State House grounds, President Lungu took the delegation for a brief game viewing and to the fish pond. Bright Mkwasa, ZMBC News, Lusaka. Meanwhile, Egyptian Minister of Agriculture, Land Reclamation, says he is impressed with the seed certification procedures that are carried out at the Zambian Seed Certification and Control Institute. Professor Abu State says the institute has the necessary equipment and qualified research personnel who are key in the implementation of the Zambia-Egypt Farm Joint Venture Project. He said this at Pomodzi Hotel after touring laboratories at the Seed Institute in Chilanga together with Home Affairs Minister Stephen Campiongo and Agriculture Minister Michael Katambo. And Mr. Campiongo said the agriculture is being used as a measure to reform inmates who are serving various sentences. Speaking at the same event, Mr. Katambo said Zambia will work with Egypt as it seeks to invest in agriculture. Use that the, the, they acquire in the correction facilities don't go to waste. So yesterday, there were two privileged uh, inmates who we found um, working at the farm and their, jo their jail terms are almost coming to an end. But these are, uh, are two inmates who have been quite productive. They have been trained on how to operate the irrigation equipment that is helping. You, know, you saw the centre pivots uh, which were running even as we were touring the farm. So we commended between uh, myself and the Honourable Minister that those two inmates, immediately they finish their term uh, of serving, they will be incorporated. In short, they will have full-time work under the joint project. We will uh, not ever hold anything back. For example, we produce 5% of our vegetable seeds, but all of the cultivars and the varieties are grown within the joint farm fields and uh, seeds uh, of maize, beans, uh, all vegetables, cabbage, uh, onion, tomato. And the collection of facility at Mwembeshi where they're also producing a lot of cultivars, a lot of varieties of medicine we need to certify because quality certified seed is key to enhance production with our farmers who are engaged into a various crop production. So there's an area of investment is also on the uh, vegetable seed uh, that is supposed to be uh, produced within the country. 
The World Bank has given Zambia six million United States dollars to establish a zootonic research laboratory at the University of Zambia. Onza Vice Chancellor Luke Mumba says the laboratory will be a center of excellence in the Southern African region for the study of zoonosis, which have become important due to rapid world population growth and intensive animal husbandry. Zoonosis is a disease which can be transmitted to humans from animals. Professor Mumba says these latest developments will help UNSA achieve its set goals in the 2018-2022 strategic plan. He said the grant, which was awarded to Zambia when President Edgar Lungu visited Japan in December 2018, will be used for the rehabilitation and equipping of the veterinary laboratory at UNSA School of Veterinary Medicine. He was speaking when he called on Zambia's ambassador to Japan, Nioi Mutiti, at the Zambian embassy in Tokyo today. Professor Mumba and his two-man delegation are in Japan to launch the university's strategic partnership with Jifu University, which is renowned for engineering studies. And Ms. Mutiti said the mission in Tokyo has continued to strengthen bilateral relations with Japan in many areas, including education sector. This is contained in a statement issued to ZNBC News by First Secretary Press at the Zambian Embassy in Japan, Yotam Mugara. Now, the Ministry of Finance has given the Ministry of Agriculture Treasury Authority to recruit 600 agriculture extension officers. Agriculture Minister Michael Katambo said extension officers will be spread across the country to provide professional guidance in crop diversification. Mr. Katambo disclosed this to the Zambia News and Information Services, ZANIS, in a telephone interview in Lusaka today. The minister explained that the recommended ratio is about one extension officer to 400 farmers or less, but that the current scenario is one extension officer to 1,000 farmers. Information and Broadcasting Services Minister Dora Silia says Patriotic Front PF Secretary General Davis Muela will tomorrow meet Prime TV management to sort out misunderstandings that occurred at a PF media briefing last Friday. Ms. Silia says government is concerned that some opposition political party leaders are using the misunderstanding between Mr. Muela and a Prime TV journalist to gain political mileage. Speaking at a media briefing in Lusaka today, Ms. Silia said Mr. Mwila is eager and believes that the matter will be resolved amicably by the parties involved because it is an isolated incident. And Ms. Silia, who is also chief government spokesperson, said the PF and government will not depart from the ideals of freedom of expression. Ms. Silia further said the PF and its government has championed freedom of the press and the right for journalists to practice without fear or favor from its inception. We believe that uh, a media council, once it states uh, the standards, it will assist in media practitioners uh, to practice in a manner that serves not just themselves, but the nation at large in the best uh, possible manner. I am happy to report that uh, Honorable Davis Muller of the Patriotic Front, uh, in showing leadership uh, once again, uh, will engage with uh, Prime TV, I believe, on Tuesday. And I believe that uh, this simple misunderstanding will be resolved amicably uh, as it should be. And uh, I, as a Minister of Information and Broadcasting, with my colleagues, uh, we are very, very pleased with this turnout of events that the two parties are willing to sit down and discuss this matter so that we see its logical conclusion. You're watching the main news on TV1 with me, Chilofia Muelwa. We take our first break. We have more news after that. Stay with us. Welcome back. We continue with the news. Government has set aside 7 million kwacha to carry out feasibility studies on the construction of a bridge across the Zambezi River which will connect the West and East Bank. Housing and Infrastructure Development Minister Ronald Chitotela is confident that government through the Road Development Agency will in August enable various contractors to bid for a tender to construct the bridge across the Zambezi River. Mr. Chitotela was speaking when he and his gender counterpart, Elizabeth Piri, paid a courtesy call on senior chief Ndungu of the Luvale people of Zambezi district. More in this report. They met on a tour of duty, housing and infrastructure development minister Ronald Chitotela and his gender counterpart, Elizabeth Piri, paid a courtesy call on senior chief Ndungu of the Luvale people of Zambezi district. 
During the visit, Senior Chief Ndungu said he will remain committed in supporting government and its policies. It forces me as a traditional leader to knock on the door of the president to send his ministers to come and see for themselves the environmental cries in my chiefdom. And this development should never be criticized or politicized by any people. And Mr. Chitotela says President Edgar Lungu is concerned with the challenges the people of Zambezi district are going through when crossing the Zambezi River. One serious pronouncement that President Lungu has embarked on the feasibility study to construct a bridge on the Zambezi. And this I can confirm that by August we may go to tender to procure the works that we should start now putting up the bridge on the Zambezi River. And Gender Minister said she was in the district to inspect Women Empowerment Program. Find the good they have received from this government and from the monies that they were empowered through the Joe project, they have put it into good use. Government is constructing a bridge to be named after the president, Mr. Edgar Chagwalungu, as visibility studies are underway. Gift in Ambao, ZMBC News, Zambes West. The Economics Association of Zambia, EAZ, has projected that the country's economy will perform relatively well in 2019 due to strong economic fundamentals. EAZ President Lubinda Habazoka says the rise in copper prices on the international market will increase the flow of foreign currency in the country. Dr. Habazoka has also told ZNBC News that the newly introduced mining tax regime will see government get enough revenue to fund other capital projects for the growth of the economy. And a trade expert, Gilbert Nkamba, said 2019 has progressed well beyond expectation owing to political stability and an increase in the price of copper. Mr. Nkamba, however, said there is need for the country to focus on diversification so that the fluctuations in the price of copper on the international market does not affect economic performance. You know, Zambia is now in the phase of debt repayment. And the way it normally happens is that uh, during this phase, uh, money supply in the economy reduces. And uh, that reduction of excess uh, money supply is going to bring about uh, stabilization into the economy, meaning uh, there's going to be less inflation in the country and uh, there's also going to be less, um, uh, uh, because of less inflation in the country, uh, uh, goods and services are going to be priced at those prices that uh, basically um, 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 uh, um, consumers are able to consume. Uh, we also expect, uh, 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 with the coming in of uh, sales tax, government to double uh, consumption tax collections. Political climate seems very stable, and then we have a government which is committed to good governance. For example, by promoting the, the dialogue process, the dialogue process. And apart from that, also by being transparent, especially on the main tax regime. It went through the due process, the due legal process, and uh, we expect my owners to receive that positively because uh, the mineral resources are used resources and uh, the country should benefit and they have to be very transparent. Construction works of the first ever Namwala Modern Market have started. The Namwala Modern Market, which will be constructed in two phases, is expected to cost about 4 million kwacha. Zanis reports. The Modern Market is being constructed by government through the means of local government and is funded by the German Development Bank KFW and is expected to cost about 4 million kwacha. Namwala Town Council Director of Works Joseph Yatema explains about the development. The, market, the Namwara district benefited the modern market while other districts in the province have benefited bus station as well as the office block depending on the priority of the district. We prioritize the modern market because we looked at the need of the people. And site engineer Tracy Shakupilwa 
of Nadrock Enterprise Limited, a Lusaka-based engineering company which has been contracted to construct the Namala modern market, says that works are on course and that the first phase is expected to be completed by April this year. And uh, in this uh, construction period, we're expected to finish within six months. So we can say our contract started in October and then we're expected to finish in April. Meanwhile, Namala Market Association chairperson Oliver Kayombo says that marketeers are happy about the development. We are happy that uh, we are having a modern market. So we want to thank the government through the local council. Uh, what uh, has happened is uh, pleasing the marketeers. The construction of a modern market in Amala district by government, once completed, will help address changes such as inadequate market structures, low revenue collections, and will also reduce trade in designated areas by marketeers. Zanis reports in Amala district of southern province. And Livingston Cross Border Traders Association Trade Information Desk Officer Gift Kabaye has observed that there is need to educate traders on the importance of being well braced with current affairs. Mr. Kabaye says traders need to be educated on the need to be well informed on various issues that can affect their businesses. Here's a report. Zambia and Zimbabwe share one of the seven natural wonders of the world, the Victoria Falls. The people of the two countries also enjoy trade. It is for this reason that Livingston Cross Border Traders Association Trade Information Desk Officer Gift Kawahe wants traders to be well braced with information to avoid inconveniences. This is in relation to the recent standoff in Zimbabwe which let Zambian cross border traders stranded. They lack information. They set officers by the borders to at least educate them, but it's still it's not enough because when they come here, there's no time for them to sit down to lay and learn. But if we had uh, facilities like uh, people reach out in the markets, tell them how, how to do business or how to work on their business and what goods are allowed at the border and the like, I think that was going to help them in one or another. In Chano Mwana Malumbo, a cross-border trader, shares his experiences. Up a business monga many young carried up a money did down by the trends of Transonga to a pericate to Unga now a pericaca Unga at least is up a zaco good manja up a monga many in a guerra dollar momeni end the station will be very to capereca my drink to goodies ama twenty dollars my twenty dollars will catch in the Ibera coma eight or something. For now, business is slowly returning to normal and traders are hopeful that things will improve further. Natasha Monsa, ZNBC News in Livingston. We take another commercial break. We have more news when we return. Don't go away. We continue with the news. The Zambia National Students Union, ZANASU, has asked the church mother bodies and the Zambia Center for Interparty Dialogue, ZCID, to quickly resolve their differences. ZANASU President Meshek Kakonde says the two should realign their focus to matters around implementation, tracking and attaining goals in the 7th National Development Plan and the Vision 2030. Mr. Kakonde says the union wants national dialogue that directly affects all Zambians, and transcends partisan divisions and personal egos. He has proposed that the seventh national development plan becomes the agenda for any national dialogue. Mr. Kakonde has also called on government to take reforms on the constitution, electoral laws and public order act to parliament. He said this in a statement made available to ZNBC News. Meanwhile, the three church mother bodies say they are currently in consultations with other stakeholders to ascertain the way forward. Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia Executive Director Pukuta Mwanza says the nation will be informed on what the parties will agree on after the negotiations. The Zambian DNA has commended government for plans to establish a college of nursing and midwifery in Sesheke. Zambian DNA spokesperson Spooky Mulemwa says plans to build the college to be called Yeta College of Nursing and Midwifery shows that government is committed to develop Sesheke and Western Province. Mr. Mulemwa has appealed to traditional leaders and the people of Western Province to support government's efforts to bring development to the area. 
He has singled out the multi-million dollar cashewnut and aquaculture projects, as well as the infrastructure development being rolled out as some of the development projects in the province. In a statement availed to ZNBC News in Lusaka today, Mr. Mulemwa also took a swipe at the opposition MPs in Western Province for taking a partisan approach to development. Now, lightning has killed two children while a third child is battling for her life in Kalulushi General Hospital. The three were struck in Kitwe's Kamakonde area. Kamakonde Ward Councillor Elijah Simukoko has confirmed the development to ZNBC News in Kitwe. Here's a report. The whole community is in shock and everyone is mourning. What happened on Friday evening in Kamakonde area of Kitwe has left people here distressed. And this is what happened here when lightning struck the house of the Mugaras. Two girls who were in this house were killed on the spot. I don't know why she never said that my neighbors ma 20 to 21 hours. I was in the hospital. 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 I was in the Brought in dead. Two other children, Ida and Isaac, survived the strike. The two spent two nights in the Kalulushi General Hospital. We had uh, two people who were admitted, um, um, Ida Mugara and Isaac, who have been uh, discharged because they are unstable. Uh, this is quite good for them to come out. Nkana Member of Parliament, Alexander Chiteme, has bought coffins for the two girls. Mr. Chiteme, who is also National Development Planning Minister, has also provided transport for the mourners. Burial will be held tomorrow. Poor Sharara, ZNBC News in Kitwe. This is the news on TV1. We take our last break. When we come back, we have sports news. Stay with us. Welcome back. In our sports segment tonight, 105 Ruggers have been selected to the next round of trials for the under-18 and under-20 national rugby teams. Join me with the details after this message. Now, details in our sports news. The Appeals Committee of World Football Governing Body, FIFA, has lifted the two-year ban imposed on Zambia's football icon, Kalusha Walia. According to a letter written to Kalusha, his appeal against the ban has been successful. This now means the African football legend is free to participate in any football activity at national and international level. This has been confirmed to ZNBC Sports by Kalusha's personal spokesperson, Nkweto Tembwe. Last year, FIFA banned Confederation of African Football Executive Committee member Kalusha Walia from all football-related activities for two years. An investigation by FIFA against Kalusha, which was opened on February 28, 2017, had found him guilty of violating Article 16 and 20 of the FIFA Code of Ethics. The investigation had focused principally on benefits received from former president of the Asian Football Confederation, Mohammed bin Hammam. FIFA had also imposed a 100,000 Swiss francs fine on Kalusha as a result of the ban. Now, the Zambian National Service, ZNS, has urged its sportsmen and women to work hard in 2019 and beat the records they set in 2018. ZNS Commandant Lieutenant General Nathan Mulenga says it is always beneficial for athletes to challenge themselves. ZNS Chief of Logistics, Brigadier General Manson Mutonga, spoke on behalf of General Mulenga at the ZNS 2018 Sports Award Ceremony in Lusaka. Wilson Mulinda gives us a report. One by one, they get rewarded for their hard work throughout 2018. This was during the 2018 Zambia National Service Award Ceremony in Lusaka. Over 50 sportsmen and women were awarded in various sports disciplines. National team boxer Evaristo Mulenga and athlete Rodan Jovu were the biggest winners of the day as they walked away with the Sportsman and Sportswoman of the Year awards. Zambia National Service Commandant Lieutenant General Nathan Mulenga had the word to share with the athletes through ZNS Chief of Logistics Brigadier General Manson Mutonga. Zambia National Service 
continues to embrace and value sport as we believe that sport, once taken seriously, can, can significantly contribute to the social, economic, and physical well-being of individuals and societies at large. And ZNS Director of Sports, Lieutenant Keno Peter Mwelwa, applauded the athletes for representing the service well in 2018. The sponsorship of ZNS Command took time to monitor the performance of a total number of 17 sports disciplines we had in the year 2018. Among others awarded for their consistence were Green Eagles volleyballer Abraham Tembo and karateka Grace Chingangu, who is the daughter of former heavyweight boxer Joseph Chingangu. Wilson Mulinda, ZNBC Sports, Lusaka. Finally, 105 ruggers have been selected to the next round of trials for the under 20 and under 20, under 18 and under 20 national rugby teams. Over 80 young ruggers attended the under 18 and under 20 rugby trials at Lusaka, out of which 50 were selected, while close to 90 attended on the Copper Belt trials, of which 55 were selected in Kitwe. Zambia Rugby Union Communications Manager Tom Chaloba said the union will, in a few weeks, conduct joint trials for selected players before final teams are named. Chaloba said the reintroduction of the Zambia Junior teams has come as a motivation among the young players from across the country. That's where we end the news on our sports. As we end the news, here's a recap of the top stories at this hour. Former Vice President Lupando Mwape has been put to rest. The Ministry of Finance gives the Ministry of Agriculture Treasury authority to recruit 600 agriculture extension officers. That's it. That's where we end the news for now. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.